Hub. Good morning once again. We are continuing with our series, My Best Friend, and we're talking about the person of the Holy Spirit and how that God has given us a gift in the person of the Holy Spirit. And we talked about it, and we're, today we're going to talk about the three different baptisms that we are to have in the Holy, in Holy Spirit and with God. And, and so I want to encourage you all today, because maybe you guys have heard a lot of various things through the years. I know I have. I've heard many different things through the years about the Holy Spirit. And some of you have never even heard there was a Holy Spirit. Some of you have seen a lot of uh, great stuff. Some of you have seen things were not good. And you're like, you know what, I'm not quite sure I want to do all that. Well, I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you once again to, to kind of leave behind your preconceived notions of what you've experienced in church in regards to the Holy Spirit. And let's just look at the scriptures and let's just receive what God would have for us today. Is that sound like a good idea? Okay, so we talked about the Holy Spirit in the last couple of weeks, and I just wanted to reiterate the, uh, something that's very, very, very important. Jesus came to the planet Earth for two major reasons, all right? And uh, he came to be the sacrificial lamb to take away the, world of the, uh, the sins of the world. That was the number one thing he was supposed to do. And if you give your life to Jesus Christ and dedicate your life, your sins can be washed away and have a relationship with God. That is the most important thing that Jesus has done. Hands down. No, there's no, no disputing that. But there was a second person, a purpose here that he came. And so I just want to stop and pause for a moment. And the reason why we're talking about this today is this. How many of you want to live with more power in your lives? How many could use more God in your lives? Jesus said, greater things will you do than, than these because I'll go to the Father and I'll send him to you. Who's him? The Holy Spirit. And so God has greater things for us than we're experiencing. We have to stop basing our life on our observation of what we see, and we have to start basing our life on the Word of God and what we stand upon. And so today we're going to talk about that. And Jesus had two purposes. One was to save. The second purpose was when he was 30 years old. And by the way, just to help everyone understand, Jesus was 100% man and 100% God. He was born of a virgin, right? And he had no sin at all, but he left all his godly power behind and became one of us. In other words, he operated out of the same thing you and I operated, except he was perfect. That's a huge thing. All right? And so everything he did, and so, he, and so he, Jesus could have died, could, could have come to the planet, could have died on the cross, and we all be saved. But something else happened to Jesus. At the River Jordan, his cousin John the Baptist, well, his name wasn't John the Baptist, his name was John. Uh, he became a Baptist later. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He wasn't a Baptist. That's okay. Anyhow, <laughs> probably John the Catholic would be more obvious. But anyhow, for my friends that are over here today, I just want to honor you today. It's so good to see you guys from the seminary. It's a blessing to have you here. You know, amen. You know what? Anyone that calls upon the name of the Lord is my brother and sister. And so, you know what? We, we, we have a body of Christ that's large. As long as we give our lives to Christ and we know he's the only way in truth and life. I count them my brother and sister in Christ. So anyhow, uh, so what happened was Jesus could have died on the cross and been enough. Then, at the River Jordan, John, his cousin, baptized him with water. He said, why are you doing this? Well, let's do it for... And all of a sudden, the Bible says the heavens rendered open and the Holy Spirit came down like a dove. And the Holy Spirit is not a dove, but came down like a dove. And when that happened, it said the Spirit came upon him and, and, and remained. And after that, everything Jesus did was by the power and the person of the Holy Spirit. He had a relationship with the Father. I only do what I see my Father doing. But everything Jesus did, he was like us. But he, every, everything he did, all the miracles he did, was by the person and the work of the Holy Spirit with the direction of the Father. And he said something scandalous. It's, it's to your advantage that I go away, that I may send him. So today we're going to talk about the three different baptisms that you and I need to have the fulfillment of God. Does that sound like a good idea, everybody? Okay? Fantastic. Let's get started here this morning as we move forward. There's three, tap, three baptisms for powerful living, and we could all use that. So let me explain what happens. The Holy Spirit baptizes us in Jesus when we give our lives to Christ. The Holy Spirit brings us to Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit woos us and speaks to us. In fact, when Jesus told the disciples, receive the Holy Spirit, he breathed on, they received it. They weren't yet baptized in the Holy Spirit, but they had the presence of the Holy Spirit within them, but they were not baptized with it yet. Okay? 
And so what happened is Jesus, before he left and was ascended to heaven, he said, hey, I want you to wait for the power from on high to fall. Don't leave Jerusalem until the power from on high falls. And that's what he told them to do. Basically, he's saying, listen, I didn't leave home without it, neither do you. So he said that. So what happens is the Holy Spirit baptizes us into Jesus. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit baptizes you in Jesus. And by the way, it's not the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's the baptism in the Holy Spirit or baptism with the Holy Spirit. So that's what begins to happen. And so people often say, well, wait, there's only one baptism. So what's all this about three different baptisms? I don't see that in my Bible. Let's look at it right here. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, for by one spirit we will all baptize into one body. You know, we have one God and three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, okay? Whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink of one spirit. So people would say there's only one spirit. That's true, but they're in three different um, personalities as we look at that. And so that's how it works. So the Holy Spirit baptizes us in the body of Christ. Now, the controversy is this. Do we have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? You don't have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit to be saved. You don't. But Jesus says, don't leave without it. And so we're going to talk about that today. And, and let me just show you the three different baptisms a little bit as we go through the Great Commission. The Holy Spirit baptizes believers into the body of Christ. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He baptizes us in the body of Christ. Jesus says the following, go therefore and make disciples, disciples are followers, make disciples of all nations, nations means ethne, which means people groups, right? Baptizes, fully baptizing in what? Them in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You see one spirit, one baptism? Well, it's all I need is one spirit. No, it says baptize them into three different ones. And so Jesus clearly tells us to do that. And so this is part of our calling as believers to make sure that we're baptized in these three. And it says in Romans 6, 3, and 4, it says, when we, says that when we are water baptized, we are, we, we are with Christ, we die with Christ, and we rise with Christ. And Ephesians says there's one baptism. So what happened was in Matthew 3, 11, John the Baptist says the following. He says this. Before we do that, the Holy Spirit baptizes us into Jesus. I'm going to show you the outline for the next period of time here. The Holy Spirit baptizes us into Jesus. The disciples baptize us in water. And Jesus baptizes us in the Holy Spirit. Now, listen, I want you to, I'm going to be doing a lot of preaching today. It's my own word. It's teaching and preaching put together. So I want you to put your school caps on today. Normally, it's a little more inspirational. But we're going to get a little bit of work here because we need to understand uh, who the Holy Spirit is and how we can access and receive the Holy Spirit, and that's all part of it, okay? Now, when John, when John was speaking to, to the disciples, they were not disciples yet. This is Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, John was going around baptizing different people. And this is what he said. I indeed, this is John, baptize you with water unto repentance, but he, that's being Jesus, who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not even worthy to carry, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, this is John speaking here. This is Acts chapter 2. The disciples don't come on the scene until Acts chapter 3. So he wasn't just talking about the 12 disciples. He was talking about everyone that will receive Christ later on. Very, very clear. It's very important that we understand that. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you, we're going to show you in Mark, Luke, and John... Uh, the four Gospels, we're going to show you that the baptism with the Holy Spirit and in the Holy Spirit is found in all, all four Gospels. There's very few things, by the way, that are in all four Gospels. Let me explain to you. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called the synoptic Gospels. Synoptic means similar. That's why you read one. I heard this before. Yeah, it's true. And all three of them um, pretty much uh, chronicle Jesus' third year of ministry. Because after the beheading of John the Baptist, then they talk about that. So for the last year of Jesus' ministry on earth, it talked about primarily. While the book of John speaks about the first two years of Jesus' um, time on earth, it has a little different, different way it's written. That's why it's not the synoptic. It's one of the gospels, not the synoptic gospels. And in fact, there's few things that are in, that are in both all the four gospels. So let me show you know what's in all the four gospels. There's several things. The number one, the birth of Christ is in all four gospels. The death of Christ is in all four gospels. 
The resurrection is found in all four Gospels. And these are important things. The feeding of the 5,000 is in all the four Gospels. That's an important miracle for many different reasons. And finally, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is also talked about and found in all the Gospels. Why is that? Because it is important. It's very important. So we're going to look real quick, and we're going to uh, settle on one big point after that, okay? If you want to look and see all the Gospels here, Matthew 3, 11, all right, very clearly saying, he's coming after me. He will baptize you. Jesus will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. And so we go to the next Scripture here. We see this. The Holy Spirit introduces me to Jesus, and Jesus introduces me to the Holy Spirit. Okay, let me just show you what happened. The Holy Spirit introduces us to Jesus. And then Jesus says here, um, I want to introduce you now to the person that gives me all the power and all the grace that I have to do the work I did. I want to introduce you into the Holy Spirit. I want to baptize you in the Holy Spirit as I was baptized. So the Holy Spirit introduces, excuse me, introduces me to Jesus, and Jesus introduces me to the Holy Spirit. I indeed baptize you with water, John, once again, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Clearly, it's in Matthew, it's in Mark. Okay, it's in Luke. John answered and said, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Then we also see in John, I did not know him. This is John the Baptist speaking here. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, upon whom you see the Spirit descending... And remaining on him, he is, he, he, I'm sorry, I'm remaining on him. This is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Who baptizes with the Holy Spirit? Jesus. Thank you. Okay, so we move forward. So we're going to look at three different aspects of what Christ has done, and it's found in the Trinity as well. There's salvation, which comes through Jesus. There's water, which is baptized, being baptized. And then there's this baptism of the Spirit. We're going to look into those three in a few moments, okay? This is all what's happening. Now, let me ask you a question. Is Jesus our example? Yes. Okay, thank you. I'm glad you said that, okay? <laughs> Jesus is our example. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Okay, now, did Jesus, was Jesus baptized in the Holy Spirit? You're not quite sure? Okay, I'll help you a little bit. Okay. And you know, God anointed Jesus, which means like, you know, anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around. Again, the River Jordan, he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon him and remained upon him, and then he went out and did what he had to do, right? He went around doing all the good and healing, and all those who were oppressed by the devil, God sent him. Now, let me explain something very clearly to you this morning. I want to reiterate once again that Jesus came to save the lost, and that is enough in itself. But he didn't just come to save the lost. He came to announce the kingdom of heaven. He had anointed teaching. He walked on water. He healed people. He cast out demons. He did amazing things. He says, as the Father sent me, I send you. So he's saying to us, don't just, go on, don't just go with the salvation as important, that's standalone, but I want you to also go in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now listen, if I'm the enemy, which I'm not, the devil, if, if I want to trip up the church and I can't get you to sin, I can't get you to do bad things, I, I don't want you accessing the power of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. The same power that rose Christ from the dead resides in us. I don't want that power being released upon the church. So I'm going to try to make it hard to understand. I'm going to bring excessive nonsense to it so you get scared of it. So there's some people that are scared of the Holy Spirit. You know, I grew up one time and someone said, I don't understand. What's the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit? It's the same. In the King James, they call it the Holy Ghost. Which reminds me of a story. There was a pastor preaching a very powerful message in a church, and he used the King James Version, and they had a little hole in the roof, and he sent a little boy up there. He said, listen, I, he bought a dove. He said, listen, I have a dove here. And when I said, and the Holy Spirit fell, when I said, the Holy Ghost falls, I want you to throw down the dove. So he gets in the middle of his message, and the Holy Ghost fell, and the Holy Ghost fell, and the Holy Ghost fell, and all of a sudden, he, and he says, pastor, 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 um, the cat ate the Holy Spirit. Do you want me to throw down the cat? 
I suggest he does. Anyhow, I'm sorry. I love cats. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. When we're born again, the Spirit of God is in us. But God wants us to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. He really does. And I'm going to show you a couple of things here about that. And it's the following. It's, it's this. It's the salvation, there's water and there's spirit. Salvation, the Spirit baptizes us in Jesus. That's what happens when we get saved. He baptizes us in Jesus. And then, and then water, the disciples baptize in water. Now listen, this is important. It's not just a symbol. It is a symbol. You don't have to be saved. There's people that teach you, unless you're baptized in water, you're going to hell. No. Unless you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're going to hell. No. The, this is a standalone. I hope you everyone understand that. But there's benefits to following the Word of God. So you're baptized in water. The disciples baptize in water. We'll get into it in a few moments. And then also the Spirit, Jesus baptizes us in the Holy Spirit. Again, we see the, the three that are being represented there. And so let me go ahead and show you some scriptures of how that works. Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the what? The name of Jesus, that's salvation, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Okay, they were baptized. What happened after that? Well, I'll show you. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, now Samaritans were the half-breeds. They were half Jewish and half others. They were not liked by the Jewish people. It was a big problem there with, uh, with racism, if you will. And what happened was that John was down there, and now when the apostles were at Jerusalem and heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. You can see before, they already see, they received Christ. They were baptized in Christ. But now, they received the Holy Spirit. And this is what happened there. Now, uh, that's just what they did. Now, I want to show you something else. Because they said the following. They said, for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Why did they need to receive the Holy Spirit? Well, this is the reason why. For as of yet, he had not fallen upon any of them. They, they, were, in, they were in Christ. They were believers. They were baptized into Jesus, but they were not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit. So as of yet, he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. You see that? Very clear. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw... Uh, through the laying of hands, the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. And that's what happens today, by the way. Hey, if you send in a, you send in $20, I'll send you a vial of Holy Spirit water, and you'll be healed. Put it on your cat, put it on your dog, put it on your car, and all that kind of nonsense, you know? There's people today that try to make money uh, off of using the Holy Spirit and make the Holy Spirit look really, really poor, unfortunately. And this happens today. Now, I want to show you some other things in the Scriptures as well. If we go on to another part of the Scripture, we can see that in Acts chapter 19, okay, this is, uh, this is later on, uh, about 10 years after, and it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And I would ask you this morning, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Well, that's not really, really that important, and uh, frankly, I really don't need the Holy Spirit. L let me tell you a little story that happened to me. I was in graduate school, you know, studying for a seminary, and I had a friend that was there, and I'm not going to mention what denomination he was affiliated with, but he was one of those denominations that did not believe that the Holy Spirit gifts were for today. And this is what he said to me, you know, you people, I'll let, when people call you you people, you know you're in trouble, you people... What do you mean, you people? You Pentecostal, charismatic, spirit-filled, whatever. He says, you people, you know what the problem with you is? What? He says, you expect too much from God. And, you know, I don't expect from much from God, and that way I'm not disappointed. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. I said, absolutely you didn't mean to say that. He said, that's the thing. Well, let me explain to you. I believe that's the reason why the church at large 
rejects the work of the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you the reason why. I can open the Bible. I can get out the Greek text, the Hebrew text. I can parse the grammar. I can read historical documents from Josephus. I can read the church fathers. I can, talk. I can do all of that. I can study it. I can look at it. We can teach you all this and talk about it. I can control it, in other words. I can control my study. I can control what I understand. But this is my sneaky sus um, suspicion, because it's happened to me. It's frustrating when the Bible says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, and you lay hands on someone and they die. I've prayed for people and they've died. I've prayed for people and they've been healed. I pray for them, they're healed again. They're healed again. Then that person gets sicker. And then I pray for someone that's dying of cancer and they die of cancer. I pray for someone else that has cartilage missing and they get new cartilage. It's really cool. But it's frustrating because I can't control it. I, I, I believe God heals. But sometimes he does and sometimes he doesn't. And that's frustrating because I want to, I don't know about you, but I like to control things. In fact, this is designed for men. <laughs> it's called a remote control. I want to control. Give me that remote control. I got it. Whoever has this in the family room is the Lord of the family room, right? I want to control. If I can't control it, it must not exist. This, I believe, I strongly believe this, is the main reason why in church history, the church has rejected the supernatural work in impartation of the Holy Spirit because we can't control God. I can control the scriptures by reading them. I can teach you things. I can have you memorize scripture. But when I pray for someone to be healed, I can't control it. And since I can't control it, it must not exist because I'm the master of the universe. I'm He-Man. <laughs> Listen, you think I'm making this, I know it's fun, but you know, I think it's true. It's true. We want to control God. If I can't understand it, then it must not be real. If I can't control it, it must not be real. And unfortunately, a lot of us live in that, in that world. When you give your life to the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden, you're no longer in charge. Now you got to listen. Like the Apostle Paul made plans. The Holy Spirit said, change plans. You pray for someone. You want them healed, and they're not healed. You pray for someone, and then they are healed. What happens with that? That's another time. Next week, I'll tell you the reason why, and you'll all, everyone you pray for after next week, everyone will be healed. I just lied. But, 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 let me tell you something here. Everyone Jesus prayed for was healed. Why? He knew the perfect will of the Father, and he did what the Father asked him to do. He said, greater works will you do since I go to the Father. Well, I don't see it. Well, you know what? My grandfather was born in 1898. William Harkoff, good German, born in Germany. There was no such thing as an airplane. Well, it must not exist, so I don't see an airplane. But how many people know the laws of gravity and thermodynamics? All the laws to create flight were already there. What did he have to do? Discover it? The Wright brothers, you know what happened in 19, and, and Kitty Hawk? If someone were to tell my grandfather when he was born in 1898, uh, when he's 10 years old, there's going to be a man walking on the moon. Yeah, sure. What had to happen? You had to take what was already there and discover it. My friends, everything you see in the Bible that the apostles do, you and I can do as well. I don't see it today. That's because we have not harnessed and discovered and yielded ourselves to such a degree where we receive it. My friends, there's a lot more happening around the world right now. I've heard miracles Incredible miracles from people I trust that God is working powerfully around here and around the world. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So we expect too much and then we are disappointed. We are disappointed. You know, I, I just wanted to say a couple things to you. People say, well, that was in the day of Pentecost. Well, Acts chapter 2, that happened for one time, one event. Once the apostles died, then we had the canon of Scripture. The perfect came, it says in Corinthians, that the prophecy shall seek, tongue shall seek, when the perfect comes. The perfect is the Scripture. There's no way that it says that the Scripture is perfect. 
The canon of Scripture is perfect. What's a canon? A canon is a collection of agreed books of the Bible. In case you're wondering what a canon is, not just for shooting things, okay? So, you need to know something here. That in Acts chapter 8 was five years after Pentecost. And then also in Acts chapter 10, that was actually 10 years. In Acts chapter 19, what we just read, that was 25 years after Pentecost. Okay, do you see that? And this is the Apostle Paul talking here. The Apostle Paul is saying, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? The Apostle Paul, he wrote a third of the New Testament. The Apostle Paul, perhaps one of the greatest theologians that ever was, he says, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? He said to them, did you receive it? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. He said to them, into what will you baptize? So they said, into John's baptism. So what happened next? Then Paul said to them, indeed, John, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to people that they should believe on him, which is Jesus, who would come after him, that is, on Christ, Jesus. Okay, he told them. Now, look at, the, look at the three processes here. Verse 5. When they heard this, they were what? Baptized in the name of Jesus. Okay, one baptism. And then when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. We're going to get into tongues next week. There's, this, there's been so much like misunderstanding. I, I actually need to spend a whole time talking about it to bring the demyth it for everybody. Okay, so next week we'll talk about that. But when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. So you have salvation, and then you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. For there are three. It says in First John, for there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father. The Word and the Spirit. Again, you, have the, you show three different baptisms we're going to look at now. Okay, three different baptisms that are available to us. And there are three that bear witness on earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. Once again, showing the Trinity of God in the three different baptisms. We'll, we'll say they agree as one. It says in 1 Corinthians 10.1, Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all of our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea. What does the cloud stand for? It stands for the Holy Spirit. You understand something. Everything happened in the Old Testament was actually, it did happen. It was historical. But there's also an object lesson that God, that the Bible used to teach us later on. So not only did God use it historically, but he also did it as an example for us later on. It says that later on, these were examples for us that we should follow. So what happened? All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and the sea. Let me explain something here. Moses is a type. There was really a Moses, by the way. And he was called, there's going to be a person like me later on. And Moses represents Jesus. So they were baptized into Moses. Okay, what happened with Moses? Moses talked about this, the Passover lamb. Then, what happened then? They, they were also led by the cloud, which would be the spirit. And then, into the sea. So what happened was, they gave their lives to God through the Passover lamb. Then what happened was Pharaoh was chasing them and they were baptized, if you will, into the water. And as Pharaoh tried to come after them, the waters closed on them. And we believe that when you get baptized, it is an outward sign of an inward commitment, but it also is obedience to Jesus. And I believe it also helps break things of the past. Okay? In the cloud and the sea. Let me show you some other scriptures about all this. Now, I'm going to, I made this myself. I'm really proud of myself. Um, <laughs> let me explain a little bit about the Old Testament, okay? We have salvation, we have water, we have the Spirit. These three represent the various aspects of who God is. Now, let me explain to you. In the Old Testament, what they used to do, this used to be the tabernacle. You would come in this way here. And before you came in, what you did is you had the blood of the lamb. You'd sacrifice the lamb, Okay? I'm going to ask the worship team to make their way, please. Um, you, you'd sacrifice the lamb on the, on, on the uh, altar, okay? Then, after you did that, you would wash yourself in the water, the lavier, okay, the water. So this represents salvation. This represents washing yourself in the water. And then the spirit 
was the flask of oil, which represents the Spirit. So before they went into the Holy of Holies, they would have to sacrifice, they'd have to wash, and they'd have to anoint. Then they would go in. Now, what would happen? He said, you know what? I, I, today I'm kind of, I'm in a rush. I was on Facebook too long. Well, let me just go ahead and just do the blood of the lamb, and let's, back, let's bypass the water and the oil. What would happen if they bypassed these three and went in here? What would happen? They would, you guys are scholars. They would die. Now, am I suggesting today that if you're not, if you want to get baptized in Jesus and you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're going to die and go to hell? No. But could it be that some of your spiritual lives are pretty dead because you refuse to receive what God has for you? Could it be that the case? Could it be the reason why you're not having victory in your life partially is because you're not embracing the three baptisms of Christ? God not only wants you to give your life to him, that's the most important, but he also wants you to obey him through the water of baptism. And you need to be empowered with the baptism in the Holy Spirit. It's available to everybody. Well, I don't want to do that. I don't like that. You know what? Since when do we tell God what we're going to do? Jesus needed the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So I guess... I don't want to do that. So I guess that means that you are better than Jesus. Is that what it means? Jesus says, the Father sent me, so I send you. So I don't like that. Well, since when? And the Bible says this. I know you don't, it's not very politically correct, but it says this. Do you not know you were bought with a price? Glorify God in your body. You realize when you give your life to Christ, he's yours. Do you want to walk around defeated and dead? In your spirit, you want to be a, 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 a you know a, a wimpy Christian that never gets anything done, or do you want to be a person that is in obedience to Christ? Listen, let me explain something very clear. God's not like this. Hm. Well, if you get baptized in the water and the Spirit, then maybe I'll give you my blessing. Huh. That's not how God is. God is like, listen, I want you to experience all that I have for you. Jesus says, you know, don't go without the Holy Spirit. And just because you can't control it, it must not exist. We don't have that option. We have a world that is in turmoil. Our country is in really deep, 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 deep trouble. The politicians sure can't. I mean, it's a complete mess. People yell, the Republicans, the Democrats, and they sit there and yell at each other, nothing gets done, and we're putting our hope in that. That's not our hope. The hope for our country is Jesus Christ. The hope for our country and the world is the church arising and being the church. <laughs> Nero couldn't stop it. Rome couldn't stop it. The Vandals couldn't stop it. Hitler couldn't stop it. Nothing is more powerful than the gospel of Jesus Christ when his church, Jesus says, the gates of hell will not prevail. However, if you think you're going to go into battle without the weapons necessary, you're going to fail. We need the power and the person of the Holy Spirit. It's available to us. Well, I don't want it. That means if you don't want it, then you're saying that you're better than Jesus. Listen, I want you to forget about all the crazy stuff you've seen. I've seen it too. Forget about all that. What does the Bible say? Follow the Word of God. The Holy Spirit's available for us today, guys. I want to see more. We're not seeing everything. Let's receive the Holy Spirit today. Can we do that? Can we, you can do that today? Yes. You know what Jesus said? It's Father's Day, so it's real appropriate. If a son asks his father for a loaf of bread, here's the father. <laughs> you want a loaf of bread, huh? <laughs> I'll give you a rock. If your son asks for an egg, I'm going to give you a scorpion. No. He says, if you, being evil, know how to give, give gifts to your children, how much more will the Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Jesus says, you need this. And by the way, it's not a one-time event. It's cultivating a relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. Going after all the promises. Let me just revisit something I mentioned earlier. Remember I mentioned before about my friend who did, he said, you know what, the problem with you guys, you expect too much, you're disappointed. Okay, 
The Bible says, Bless the Lord, all my, all my soul, who saves you from all your sins and heals all your diseases. Right? Everyone you share the gospel with, do they, do they give their life to Jesus Christ? They ask you. When you share the gospel with somebody, does everyone you share the gospel with give their life to Jesus Christ? No. Well, if that's the case, then we shouldn't share the gospel anymore because I can't control it. Is that the logic we have? No. What do we do? We still share the gospel. Come to me, and, and we, let it, we leave it up to God, don't we? We do the best we can, but ultimately we have to leave it in God's hands. We have to relinquish control, and some of us are control freaks because you don't trust the Father because your Father was not good to you. You don't trust the Father, and you're missing out on an opportunity. What we have to be able to do is say, I trust you, God. We have to be able to do is say, I'm willing to receive the Holy Spirit. And I'm willing to step out in faith and be the person that God has called me, the man or the woman God has called me to be. We need the Holy Spirit more than ever before. And as long as I'm the pastor of this church, I will always talk about salvation. I'll always talk about water, and I will never stop talking about the person of the Holy Spirit. My God, we need more of Him. We need more of Him in our marriages. We need more of Him in schools. Our country needs us. It does not need another political figure. It needs the church to arise. We need the Spirit of God. That's the only hope for our country. That's the only hope for the world. We got to do our job, guys. We need the Spirit of God. Will you all stand? Come on, let's all stand tonight today. Will you give your life to God today? Come on, we need Jesus. Some of you have never given your life to Jesus Christ. This does not matter without this. Water baptism and spirit means nothing without salvation first. You may believe in Jesus. Oh, yeah, I believe in Jesus, but you've never given your life to him. You know, it's real simple. Let me just give you a little example here. Let me go ahead and take this off. The... Okay. I believe in this chair. I really do. This is this chair. I believe in it. It's called a church chair, by the way. I believe in it. I believe in the chair. It's made out of thread. I can talk about the yarn count. I can talk about how it's constructed with, a, with some metal, with some wood. And I believe in it. I believe in it. I believe in it. I believe in it. You believe in the chair. I believe in the chair. But until you... Put your faith in it. I, not only do I believe in the chair, but I lean on my weight and sit upon it. Now I've received the chair, and the chair's received me. My friends, have you leaned and put all your weight on Jesus Christ? If you haven't, you're not saved. This can happen today. If you'll pray this prayer with me from your heart. It's not a magical prayer. It's a condition of the heart. If you want to just close your eyes and bow your heads and pray this prayer with me out loud. You don't have to, but you get to. If you want to give your life to Christ today, let me repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross to pay for all of my sins. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins, both known and unknown. And I choose to put my faith in you today and I choose to make you the boss, the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, every head bow. You can say, Pastor, I prayed that prayer. Just quick show of hands so I know how to be, pray better. Pastor, I prayed that prayer. Thank you. Anyone else say thank you? Anyone else? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise the Lord. Look up me real quick. Right on this card, it says, I accepted Jesus today as my Savior for the first time. If you made every commitment, sign that too. We want to help. I'm going to, ask the, I'm going to ask the prayer team to make their way up. What you can do is give your card to one of the prayer team, or you can put it in one of the receptacles when you leave. There's wooden boxes. Okay? Now, I want to pray for you to receive the Holy Spirit. That's going to happen. God's Word is true. Just like you pray salvation, you can pray for the Holy Spirit. The Bible says you ask it, you receive it. It's that simple. You walk in faith. So I'm going to ask you to pray right now with me. I'm going to pray out loud. You're going to pray with me. Lord Jesus, you said that we will be baptized in the Holy Spirit if we ask. 
And so, Jesus, I ask you right now to baptize me in the Holy Spirit. I receive the Holy Spirit in faith. I thank you. I am now baptized in the Holy Spirit. I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Well, let me say something to you. Is that all? Yeah. You don't have to run around and cut yourself like the prophets of Baal. You don't have to go through a bunch of charades. You ask it. You receive it in faith. Now, if I give you a bunch of gifts underneath the Christmas tree, it's in your house, right? But now we need to unwrap the gifts and learn how to use them. I can buy you a brand new bicycle from Toys R Us. And if you're a father, we've all put those wretched things together. Well, you have to follow the instructions, right? You put the bike together. Listen, these gifts are beautiful. They're for us. But what we must do is we must go after them, learn how to utilize them, and do it in grace and in love. Next week, we're going to speak about speaking in tongues. And I guarantee you, it would not be crazy and weird. It's, it's, it's beautiful. God has given to the, to the church. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's go ahead and sing that song. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Let's go ahead and do that today as we conclude our time. sing out. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is on our hearts alone to be overcome by your presence. I'll sing as a prayer to him this morning. you to do something here. You can do this at home. Get to a quiet place with the Lord. Put some praise work in the music on. Receive the Holy Spirit. You receive it in faith. Work it, work it in what's been given to you guys. Listen, God has great plans for us individually and as a church. The world is waiting for us. We're the answer, the body of Christ. Amen, everybody. Listen, if you want prayer, please come forward. Otherwise, we understand. We're going to continue to play, play if you want to have more time of prayer or seeking God. Otherwise, we dismiss you. God bless you, and happy Father's Day. The Father loves you. Amen.